Taylor with Wholesale Setup Supply. Today we're gonna to take apart this Thomas AP80. We're gonna start with the four screws around the sides. You can unscrew this. It's a Phillips screw. Just take this top housing off. Get the filter out the top. You can rinse or wash this gasket every six months. Replace it every year. Um, the kit does come with a new gasket, so you go ahead and replace that during a rebuild. So we'll just take this off, set it on the side with everything else, just like so. So your pump is covered by this shroud material. You can just take it off kind of prevents vibration and noise. And we're gonna take off this top plate right here. There's four screws holding in the diaphragms themselves. Usually the screw would be facing the actual arrow itself, but right now you can see it has turned, which indicates that the diaphragms have busted. I'm using a drill here. If you use a drill, be very careful. The pump housing is made of plastic. So I recommend, especially if it's your first time to use a screwdriver. And we're also gonna take off this gasket on the bottom and side of the chamber block. A new one comes in your kit, so you will be replacing this as well. You definitely want to make sure to install this correctly. This is a lock screw, so you want to make sure when you put it back on that it's oriented the correct way. Okay, so we're going to slide your rod block out. The shims can be inserted. You just put them in. It comes with four of them. I find it best to just use two at an angle like this. That holds it centered. As long as you're doing one side at a time, this works really great. If you're gonna take both of these off at the same time, um, you might have more problems. Definitely recommend doing it this way. You also wanna push this back into the motor. So if you popped it out to get it off, just push it back in like this, okay? And then we're gonna work this diaphragm into the mount. Just, we wanna make sure the chamber block is pressurized. Same process for this side as well. So not really anything different here, just gonna take the screws out. And here you can see, that's where it broke. So, broken diaphragm. Get this old one off of there, there you go. That's your tear, that's why the pump turned off. Get the new one on, no tears. Let's slide this back in there. And we're gonna go ahead, get that lined up, on the rod block, and then we'll push this back in, like so. Work it down into the frame. Washer first, then the lock nut. Now we're gonna get our chamber block and get the new gasket installed on it. Get the gasket over the pins, so, like that if you don't have good fingernails. So, gasket's installed, chamber block's gonna go back on, get our screws back on. This is snug up against the frame. So if it's not quite tight, you'll see a gap there. These shouldn't wiggle around at all. That's snug and tightened. We're gonna remove our shims. That's done. Now the safety switch, like I said earlier, this has a little switch inside. We're gonna rotate this just to the very center. You may not feel very much pressure on this, but you will hear a little click. So you can see we reset the safety switch on top. It's now engaged, it's ready to go. The next step is going to be to install our gasket and we're gonna put it over the top of the lid, like so. Okay, now let's get our wires back in the clips. This rotates this way, get those in there, and we're gonna set this down on top of your gasket. And the top cover here actually lines up to these pins. So just like that, we can screw it down and our safety pin is engaged. You can reset the safety pin after you get this lid secured. That's perfectly fine, probably easier. I did it this way to show you how it works. Get our grounding wire. Want to make sure that's connected. Then we can get the outer gasket for the motor housing. So let's get this one off. Just lift it up pretty much. It'll be snap, snap, snap. It comes off just like that. Let's get the new gasket for the pump. There's pins around the sides and back like that. And you just get it setting in there nice and tight. And then you can put your top housing back on. Just rotate it to line up power plug, light that on there like so. All right, four corner screws back in, and we can tighten it all down. And now we just have the air filter. We can put the new filter in, got it right here. Most of them also have this little dot of paint. If you look very closely, there's also one on your housing, unless it's really, really old maybe, but that paint lines up with where the filter goes as well. So that kind of helps you align it. Just like just that. make sure the screw hole lines up with the screw hole for that filter screw. So if that screw hole lines up, then you're pretty much good to go. So let's just get that lined up, as you got it right. Then you can just kind of press it down. And again, if you don't have bare nails, you might want to use a little nut driver to get. Now we have everything reassembled. We can put our lid back on. The screw goes back inside the hole. Now, that's it. All there is to it. Reconnect your power and give it a test. Make sure it's working. You'll hear it hum. You put your finger in front of this. You'll feel the pressure back up and you can kind of feel the air flow through it. Everything's working. If you have any questions, find us online, give us a call, we'll be glad to help. Thanks.